but uh, I like to have it somewhat stiff. You want to do it where you see like little chocolate chips and like that, and it stays in like these little um, uh, hills. And the reason being is you want it to roll up slowly. Um, if it, you don't want it to fill in the image. Uh, you want to keep your drawing as um, tight and as true to what, how you've drawn it the first time when you're, when you're printing. So it takes a little bit of work, the preparation, but uh, it's all worth it. Uh, like um, Professor Taylor said, uh, lithography is the most autobiographical of all the techniques in printmaking. Uh, if you love to draw, it's the best for uh, drawing technique. It's a planographic uh, technique as well. That means, again, you've got your nice planar surface that you have, uh, and you draw directly on the surface, and then you etch it accordingly. So you're almost like a chemist as well. The etching process, um, there's two ways. You can either do it as a stone with a, a limestone base, uh, or as Bree has it, on an aluminum plate. The aluminum plate is ball grain. That means it has a little bit of a texture on it and that which you can draw, usually using a, crease, a greasy crayon that's specially made for lithography, which is a litho crayon. Now you can get anything that has grease. It could be your hands, it could be, I had a friend who used french fries, the grease from a french fry, um, and you can get it to print. It was started by Alloy Senefelder. He was the one that discovered lithography. He was a playwright and he started experimenting. That's how all the great artists start, they experiment. And he started on the limestone, he started, um, I think from what I remember, he actually wrote a um, grocery list of some sort. And he experimented on ways to print it. And he came up with the idea of lithography and, and then it, it kind of festered from there. I like it because I love to draw. So uh, besides relief, this became another outlet for me. Yeah, I mean, you'll get some muscles in this, trust me. Okay. So again, there's different types of ink that you can use. I like the roll-up black or the crayon black, especially when I, um, I'm etching, just because I think it's um, the less greasy and that it will look, roll up the slowest. Okay. And again, like John said, this is magnesium carbonate. It's just a white powder that you add to make it even stiffer. You don't want to make it too stiff where it takes forever to roll up, but you don't want to make it where it's too easy. So that's a different ink than we're using. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And this is specifically designed for lithography. And so you're like, when we're doing etchings, I want you guys to have loose ink. Yeah. And you need stiff ink for this, and there's, yeah. and that's very important to understand the difference between stiff ink and why do you need this type of ink? The materials and the technique behind it, and so. And this, what we're going to do is a, a second etch, and then Bree's also going to do a proof. Okay. Um, why do we etch? Well, first of all, you're drawing on this um, surface, and basically you have to use an acid gum mixture to uh, set the image on the surface, okay? Uh, like you do with relief, you carve away, you print, you have to set this image uh, on the surface uh, and basically burn it. So what we're going to do is uh, she gummed and she did her etches. Um, there's a great book by my mentor Lisa Drost. Uh, she has like a, it's like a recipe book depending on the type of crayon you use to draw with she gives you basically how many drops of acid you need to use to um, basically burn the image in. I like to do second etches. Okay. Um, some artists will even go further and do a third etch. Okay. Uh, depending on what do you mean by that? Uh, a third etch basically stabilizes it more. You mean a, when you say an etch? It's what I did on my uh, yeah. last Wednesday. Yeah, so it's Where basically you're like dipping it in an acid when you so say it's, an etch. What? Yeah, so it's basically a gum acid mixture uh -huh. that you are putting on different parts of the image, mm -hmm. and it's burning the image into the surface mm -hmm. of the. Uh, you, I mean, not like you physically can feel a difference, but it's basically setting the image onto mm -hmm. the plate, so that when we use the ink, wherever we have the image, the ink will gravitate towards. The whole idea with lithography is that water repels grease. Mm -hmm. So all these areas that don't have anything drawn in should, in theory, stay white. All the areas that are drawn should 
receive the ink and print. Mm -hmm. That's the theory of it, okay? If the etches were done correctly, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so before we get started, I like to have everything ready. We gotta put the ink onto the slab. Okay. So, Marie, did you draw that with a greasy crayon like she's talking about? Okay, I guess I didn't really realize that. Yeah, and can you use pencil? You Pencil has a little bit of grease, um, but it's so fine, it's hard to pick it up. You really mm -hmm. want to have what's called that litho crayon. Um, it's specifically formulated for lithography, and it's the best way you can go about it. Now, she's going to be doing predominantly black and white um, with one reductive color. Uh, at some point when we get this kind of down pat with the black and white, okay? So you want to have the ink slab out pretty much like this, have all everything nice and even, okay? Have it all even on the roller, put that down. Uh, sometimes I'll put leather cuffs on there because I tend to brace my roller really hard and end up getting blisters on there. Um, I would advise I don't have gloves, so I'm going to show you the bad way of doing things. The The best way, when you do any kind of chemical work, you want to make sure you have protective gloves on um, because we're going to use what's called lithotine. Do you want me to get you gloves? Yeah, if you have them. Yeah. The black ones are over there. Um, lithotine, to, to remove this, because we're basically going to take all this off and then roll fresh ink on there. Um, so there's a chemical process that you need to use. To remove the image, you want to use what's called lithotine. It's specifically made for lithography. You don't want to use mineral spirits. Mineral spirits, if you use it, will take your image, you'll never get it back, okay? Um, that's a degreaser. This, I don't know how you would go about this. It's, it's, it, it will remove, but it won't take away. take away, okay? So what I do is, yeah, I'll use this one, okay? And you don't need a lot. Um, I like ventilation when I do it. Some people love the smell of lithotine. You don't need to drench it. I need some paper towel. Okay. Do you want the blue towels or do you want the white towels? I like the blue ones because they you don't have to use as many. Okay. And I'm sloppy, so this will probably go everywhere. I'll try not to be so sloppy. So what you want to do is, you want to be able to take all this image out. It's going to be hard. I hope I can get it. I have to let it set for a minute. Yeah, just because she's got that gum on there. And you got to say bye bye to it, and then hopefully, <laughs> God willing, it'll all come back image okay you want to get rid of all that old drawing it's got to go bye bye and you might have to scrub it a little bit it's not going to hurt anything again if it's etched correctly it should come back so did you have to put this in an acid bath like no no, okay, no. no you, you know i was brushing it on there yeah. so you brush on different amounts of acid for different values yeah. as you do it right. okay. okay it's it's, it's yeah. basically what you're doing what's called spot etching should have been paying attention when you were doing this. And I will be honest with you, depending on um, what crayon you use and how hard you draw, um, that you have different values of etching or different um, amounts of etch. And you use phosphoric etch for this, not nitric. Yeah, nitric would burn it out too much. Yeah, you nitric is for scum. All right, so now, after that's removed, you want to use S, what's called asphaltum. Asphaltum is a greasy substance that will again attract the ink to the areas you want it to attract. Now I usually rub it on the whole plate. Again, always use gloves when you're doing this. Protect your hands. So you want to use two sponges. The one sponge you're going to use to take the chemicals off, um, that's going to be your dirty sponge. The other sponge is what you're going to use um, while printing. That's your clean sponge. Okay, you don't want to mix them together. Sometimes in the clean water, I'll also add a little bit of more gum arabic. Gum arabic is good to um, 
make sure your whites stay white. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take all this off, right? And then if luck prevails, the image should stay a nice brown when you put that on top of that red. It came on a good day. Yeah, that's fine. Ah, see, that so matters. now we can already see some of the image, okay? So what's gonna happen is anything that has the asphaltum on it should be what we're gonna see roll up, okay? And I also like to do a second etch too, um, just to make sure that, um, again, not only to stabilize, but if I need to, to change anything at all, um, remove something or make sure that my whites stay white, I can do that, okay? So you can see, that looks good. We have an image. Now, when I first started this, I did this wonderful drawing, thought it was fantastic, and I um, did my etch wrong and I had nothing left, okay? Um, which is a horrible feeling, but I figured that's how you learn. We've been lucky with Brie. That was my biggest fear is that she did this beautiful drawing and then I'd skip a step and it'd be like, no. dang it. Uh, you know, there are ways you can get it to work. It's just, it's just good if you go the right way. So you don't want it overly wet, but you want it damp. You don't want to have this plate dry when you're rolling the ink on there. Because if it's dry, it's just going to fill in. You're just going to have a mess, okay? But you don't want so soppy where you put your roller in wet wetness and then have it flying everywhere okay so it's a little bit trickier with plate just because it doesn't absorb like a stone okay so I take this okay you always want to do it fast to get started to get the ink on there okay and then you go slow and of course I got something on the roller so okay. what I'm looking for is that I want it to be 10% darker than my drawing. Okay, so as the artist, I have to look at it and see. Now, there's different ways that people um, put the ink on there. This is how I learn. Doesn't mean my way is better than another, it's just the way that I learn. But I will say, if Liz was my teacher back in the day, <laughs> I probably would have learned this better. Yeah, it's because this is easier yeah. than the way I was taught. And sometimes it's nice to have a second person with you to be your roller. I mean, uh, you want me to? your no, I can do it. The sponger. Now, when she's actually printing, um, I told her she has to be aware of how many times she rolls. So I'm very conscious of pattern and how many times I do things so that if I like what I'm doing, I'm consistent, okay? Uh, it's like etching. Wiping has to be consistent to get your images the same way, right? Because that's the whole thing. But for right You're not wiping ink off as you go over the no, image right now. No, not at all. Now, before I print it, I will want to not wipe the image, okay? But I'm not wiping anything. Is this what you did last semester? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the one that she did. Now, if she wants to add color, um, we are going to do an actual color piece, but for the beginning, she's going to do um, a monotype. Is that correct? And then print on top of it? Is that what you guys were going to yeah, do? That's what, that was the plan. Okay. So you, we can test the colors. You can see how it's getting darker. Okay. That's what I'm looking for. And again, as the artist, I'm thinking about, you know, how dark I want it to be. And you can see the image coming on the roller too. Yeah. And I'll probably do this three times and then, you know, we'll run a proof and just see what it looks like. Ink, wet, ink. Again, you don't want it soppy. I would show you what happens if it was dried, but I don't want to on this image. So. No. Yeah, it would just fill in. It would be completely black. You can get it um, back. It's just, it's just a pain. 
I've seen some people, that's how they almost start, too. Yeah. And that, to me, seems backwards. Yeah, I wouldn't do it. That's so. so this is about your third time, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And slow. You don't have to be a maniac. I always do the first one really fast just to get that initial ink on there, and then I go slow. Do you have to put a lot of pressure down? I bear down just because that's just how I am, but you don't have to. But you see how I kind of flip the roller? So I'll go this way. I like to do that. Just to kind of hopefully get a new area. And then get, get me uh, two pieces of the white paper. Or, or do you have any newsprint or something? All right. So at this stage, what I'm going to do is... I might go ahead and just do one more thing. It's too dry. I'm just going to do this. I'm trying to get that... That line. Line out. Sometimes it's easier yeah. said than done. Okay. And then I'll take the sponge. I don't like stray stuff, so sometimes I'll take my sponge and just Don't go around and get all that out. Put your yeah. paper down here. I always like to have a top sheet. Um, maybe get a, a, a big white sheet. Um, and that's to protect if there's any grease. Uh, this uh, script bar is a little bit big for this image. I'd probably get a medium-sized image where it's bigger than the image but doesn't go off the plate. But for now, this is fine, okay? Um, we've already marked it on here where we start and stop, okay? We've got the tin pin with the grease, okay? This is different than an etching press. An etching press has that barrel drum. This is a scraper bar. So what will happen is um, move it to right about here. This is where we marked it. That's where we're going to put our pressure down. So we take it and we come down with it, okay? Run it through. That grease is important because you want it to slide nice and easy. We go right to about here where we've marked it. Lift it up. I usually take the scraper bar, take some of this grease off. I'll use my fingers, which is completely gross, but that's okay. It's not gonna. It's, it's not no. gonna hurt you. No should be a one shot. So you had prepared this ahead of time and this is what? This is called tipping grease. Uh, you can use Vaseline. Uh, it's basically just a greasy substance that we can, uh, makes it easier for it to run through, run over. You can use a piece of plexiglass, but this is actually just called a tipping. It's like a harder plexi, okay? So take this off. Now, again, I don't know, we're running proofs. We gotta see how dark it is from the get go. Hopefully we do have somewhat of an image. And there's your proof. Okay. So again, it's reverse, okay? Not like a screen print, so it is reverse so that you have to draw whichever way you want the opposite. And there you go. And then to do more proofs, if I want it darker, um, I'd go ahead, re-wet it, darken it up again because this is gonna tell me I want it to be the darkness I want before I etch it. And if I'm happy, then I would just go ahead and let it dry and go from there. It's up to you, boss.